Hello. In this video I will use the lead bath method to extract gold from 500 grams Soviet integrated circuits. Warning. This video is intended for demonstration purposes only. Trying to duplicate the shown procedures may result in serious injury or even death. I'll be using my small furnace and small stainless steel crucible. After melting 700 grams lead in the crucible I added 200 grams of the ICs and then added 300 grams more lead to cover the chips. I heated the charge for 3 minutes, then stirred with metal pipe, and prepared a perforated stainless steel sheet to use as a strainer. The plan was to scoop up the chips with a ladle and shake them onto the sieve, so that the molten lead could flow out through the holes into the metal pan underneath. Unfortunately, it didn't work as planned. The lead cooled too quickly, and by the time it reached the screen a significant amount had solidified into clumps with the chips, making the separation of lead and ICS an almost impossible task. I added more lead to compensate for the one pulled together with the ICs, and put the lumps aside to deal with them later. For the rest of the ICS I had to solve the problem with the lead being pulled together with the chips. This time, to increase the lead to ICs ratio, I split the remaining 300 grams of chips into two batches of 150 grams each. I added sugar to reduce any oxidized lead back to lead metal. Since I didn't have a skimmer on hand, I had to improvise. I drilled a small hole through the ladle. This allowed the molten lead to flow back into the crucible and at the same time stopped the stripped chips from falling back. It worked like a charm. Here I'm adding sugar again, before adding the last batch. Stirring well, making sure all ICs are in contact with the lead, adding another spoonful of sugar, putting the lid on the furnace and letting it cook for a couple of minutes. Stirring once again and removing the stripped chips with the perforated ladle.
Now that I've finished stripping the chips, it's time to add the silver contacts, which will aid the cupelling process. The silver content of the contacts is about 83%. It is added to collect and dilute the gold into an alloy known as Do-Ray. Just as I started pouring the contacts some of them exploded on contact with the molten lead and I jumped back spilling the contacts all over the place. Not making sure all the contacts, or any other material for that matter, are bone dry before placing them in the molten metal is a big mistake that instead of the small burn on my right hand, could have cost me an arm and a leg and possibly an eye. Or two. I've done this hundreds of times, so many times in fact that I can do it with my eyes closed, yet even the slightest slip can shut them forever. A good reminder of how routine can get you killed. Enough with the dramas. I have to deal with the inconvenience of collecting the contacts one by one. This time I decided to preheat them. Here I used my ladle as lid, but because of the thermal expansion it got stuck in the crucible. No matter how hard I tried to remove the ladle, it was as if welded to the crucible, only when it cooled, it came out by itself. Finally I placed the crucible back into the furnace, stirred the contacts, put on the lid and cranked up the heat. After 10 minutes everything melted together. Here I'm preheating an old pan. Everything is ready for the pour. After the pour I scooped out the slag. Half an hour later, the lead do ray solidified. Next step, cupellation. At first I wanted to use a cast iron skillet for the cupellation, so I melted the lead in it, but it turned out to be impractical when it comes to removing the litharge. I decided to add another 350 gram silver contacts, all that I had left, which needed to be refined anyway.
20 minutes later I had 2 kilograms of lead du ray cake which I divided into 3 parts. I prepared an old stainless steel bowl filled with dry compressed and smoothed out Portland cement, placed it in the furnace and added the first part of the lead du ray. I put the lid on the furnace to raise the temperature. When the dew ray melted into a puddle, I removed the lid and the middle section of the furnace to allow more air to come into contact with the surface. Without the lid I was losing too much heat, causing the button to slowly freeze, so I used another propane torch to heat from above. Using oxidizing flame in a circular motion I was heating around the puddle. Keeping the flame pointed directly at the center of the puddle should be avoided during the drive as it hinders the oxidation, but is necessary after the closing to be able to bring the process to completion by absorbing the last oxides into the cupel. I'll be using my first do ray for inquartation, but more on that later. This is the second lead do ray.
Here I tried another setup, by lifting one side of the lid ajar, I allowed air to pass just over the surface of the molten lead, thereby oxidizing it. Everything was working fine except for the slow oxidation rate. During the driving phase, the oxides are running towards the edge of the molten lead, where they are being absorbed by the cupel. In an attempt to speed up the process, I ended up using my second torch again. This is the closing phase, during which I have to rise the temperature. To raise the temperature even more, I put the lid back on the furnace ajar. If we keep heating after the closing, we will enter the rainbow phase. A play of colors on the surface of the button. If we keep heating past the rainbow phase, we'll get to the last mirror phase. I removed the lid and the heat and left the button to cool. Upon cooling some spitting occurred which is a sign of purity.
For the last part of the lead do ray I had to replace the cement in the bowl. Preheating the new cupel.
With the last button, the weight of the Du Ray is a total of 640 grams. Du Ray dissolution in concentrated nitric acid. After the Du-Ray dissolution, I moved the gold residue to a melting dish. Pinch of borax. Melting. The total of the expected gold, based on previous yields was 9 grams. 5.97 grams gold is 75% of the total recovered. This leaves 1.99 grams gold for the first button. Adding both weights together equals 7.96 grams or roughly 1.1 grams less gold than expected. This is the material that must be reprocessed to find the missing gold. And this is how it should look like when finished. I'll continue with the refining process in my next video, where I will use three different precipitating agents, each capable of precipitating ultra pure gold. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe below.